Hey, this is Sunny Ono with Altimore Dragon. And this, this is, is Perched Altimore Dragon on Top Rope. The following announcement has been paid for by Perched on the Top Rope. Welcome everyone to a, a special edition of Perched on the Top Rope. I am your host, Lee Walker, and as you see, I am joined by the legendary duo of Ultimo Dragon and Sonny Ono. Guys, how you doing today? Very good. Now, I'm going to be speaking for multi-international champion Ultimo Dragon. Now, mind you, he's, he's fluent in many languages, but I'll be working today not as just his manager, but as his interpreter. Not to be confused with translator. I am his interpreter. You understand that, Lee? I understand. Okay. All right. All I just right. want to lay the ground rule before we start. All right. Um, Ultimo Dragon, you originally started training at the dojo in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and then you left to go to CMML. Uh, what was the reason for deciding to leave New Japan? あの、自分は体が小さかったんですよ。で、その時の日本はみんなレスラーの人は体が大きい人だった。それで山本先生があの日本じゃチャンスがないからあの、まあメキシコっていう話をもらって僕はすぐ行きました。So even at that time, the Japanese in order to be a Japanese wrestler, pro wrestler, you have to be big, big body, height. Height was very important. So uh, uh, his dojo teacher or sensei told him to say, hey, because of your ability, you'd be better off to go to Japan, I'll go to Mexico. And so he listened to his teacher and went to Mexico. Okay, well, while you were in Mexico and, and down at CMLL, you adapted the Ultimo Dragon persona. You were originally going by your uh, real name, how did how did you come up with the Ultimo Dragon? So, I was in the first time I was in Mexico. When I first went to Japan, or to Mexico, from Japan, UWA. there was a company called UWA. Okay. And my real name was Mask Nash. He says I was competed there with no mask as my real name. So, there. その後4年ぐらい経ってからその、CMLL の方から僕にあのまあスカウトですね。It says about 4 years later after that, uh, scout from CMLL contacted him. で、その時のCMLLのそういうことしてたのがあのアントニオペーナさんなんですよ。The the people was in charge at the time was Antonio Peña. And and he's the one who approached him. それで最初僕に話が来た時にあのペニアさんと会った時にで君はあのオクタゴンのパートナーにするからって言われたんですねで自分からしたらオクタゴンってその時はもう一番のスターだったんですよ俺がえってなんで He couldn't understand because Peña asked him I'm gonna make you a partner of Octagon He says well Octagon is a top star at the time So he goes what? Me? その時の WWE いいで例えるとあのハルクホーガンとアルティメットウォリアーみたいな関係ですよね。He says he says if you compare to WWE at the time, it was like Hulk Hogan and an Ultimate Warrior kind of thing. So he was really. 自分は信じられなかったんですよ。He said I couldn't believe that they were giving me this opportunity. I didn't believe it. でまあしばらくその時間があってでその前にいた団体でやっててももう別に。he took the chance because where he was where he was competing before that opportunity came by, he knew that he was limited. That's why he went with Antonio Pena. Antonio Pena told me when I was 24 years old, he said, you're a great wrestler, but あの、なんかやっぱりなんか着なきゃいけないって言われたんです。He says but you need a new 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 look. The mask を被りなさいって言われたんです。She so told me to put on a mask at the time. で、その時にあ、子供の頃からマスクマンは好きだったんで、ま、
Iyoti. So even when I was a child, from from my childhood, I loved the mask, you know, the gimmick. Mm -hmm. And and so he says, of course, I would I would do that. でその時に僕が僕が逆にペーナさんにオファーしたのは俺はタイガーマスクやりたいって言ったんですよ。So、I told them then I like to be the tiger mask. でペーナさんが僕に言ってくれたのはいやメキシコでメキシコ人が日本人をイメージとか想像するのはタイガーじゃなくてやっぱドラゴンだって言われたんですよ。ペーナ told them and says where the Mexican people look at Japanese Is not tiger, a dragon. So that's when he told me, You will become a dragon. So that was the beginning. Okay. And、um, is it true that you use Bruce Lee as part of your, your character with the Ultimo Dragon? So I don't know where all those stories came from. But you know, it was part of the storyline、mm-hmm. that,、okay. that was, you know, I, I was a student or, or with、uh, Bruce Lee. Okay.、Um, one of the things I always like to ask anyone who has worked with Owen Hart, I always like to ask a couple of questions. And you actually wrestled Owen Hart in Japan, part of the war promotion, 29 years ago, almost to the day. It was October 21st, 1992. With today being October 23rd, what was it like to wrestle Owen Hart? Yeah, it's, it's the match I had in Sapporo, Japan.、Mm-hmm. He says his aura was different than, than other wrestlers.、Mm-hmm. I did a single match with him. シングルマッチ組まれたときにびっくりしたんですよ。え、俺こんなすごい人と試合するの。I couldn't believe that they were allowing me to have an opportunity to have a match with someone who's, you know, he felt that he was such a great wrestler. で、試合の内容はもう今覚えてないんですけど、ただ僕にとってはやっぱ彼と試合をできたっていうのはやっぱすごく光栄なことで喜びであって、あの今のも僕の中ですごい大切な。He says I don't remember the match itself. But the opportunity that was allowed me to wrestle with such a great wrestler, and it, it's one of the highlights and memory that I have that I got to wrestle. Oh, wow. That, that's incredible. I'm a big Owen Hart fan, so that,、uh, I, I watched the match, and it was a good match. It was, it was really, really entertaining.、Um, now, when it comes to Owen Hart, I don't know if you follow American wrestling now, but AEW has partnered with the Owen Hart Foundation and they're going to do、uh, an Owen Hart Cup in his memory and they're doing a, a bunch of merchandise and stuff. How do, how do you feel about that? He said he feels that because Kenny Omega is one of the principal p e r s o n at AEW as well as he's a champion. So he's Canadian, so I'm sure there's that influence as well. Okay.、Um, you know, speaking of AEW, Sonny, you were there for the Yuji Nagata John Moxley match. Yeah. How, how did you feel about the match? And then Ultimo, how did you also feel about that match? No, no, he, haven't, he have not seen it. Oh, okay, okay.、Um, for me, I was, you know, I was there in person to、uh, 20 years later, 20 plus years later,、mm-hmm. um, uh, that Yuji got to come back on the same network, TNT, that WCW was. So he was, you know, and not only that, many of the guys, the production crew,、uh, Many of the WCW guys. So it was good to see everybody and, and give, give, you know, gave me an opportunity to go see and, and, you know, people I haven't seen for 20 years. And, and many of the, like Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, those guys are、uh, people who are working behind the scene at AEW. So it's great to see those guys again. Great. And Ultimo, was there ever、uh, an opportunity? Had AEW ever contact you, contacted you to? Wrestle there or do any, any sort of anything with their promotion? 
Well, and I can speak to this. Uh, when, before the AEW started on uh, uh, Turner Network, mm -hmm. um, we did get a call directly from Tony Khan. Um, I did. I spoke with him. We wanted to have uh, Ultimo Dragon on the show for one of their promotional shows in Florida. Um, I think it's a computer... Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's a, a computer convention mm -hmm. type of show, type of show, and and uh, it was he was just, you know, he he wanted to know what the detail was, but the, the, but uh, uh, detail, briefly, what I can tell you that it was, you know, one time shot, and and he was getting ready to go back to Japan for uh, Dragon Gate, um, which is a company he started mm -hmm. originally in Japan. But he'd been away from it. I stepped away from it for many years, and and that opportunity came at the same time. So it was it was more of a conflict of uh, a scheduling than okay. anything else. Okay. Um, in Ultima, when you when you went to Mexico, was learning the lucha libre style was was that a, a learning curve for you at all? I don't. He says, I didn't really study Lucha Libre. He says, but when I got there, um, I just flowed into it. Okay. Yeah. He says, because since I didn't participate in Japanese pro wrestling, he was at the dojo only. So when I came to, to Mexico in Lucha Libre, it was, it was, that's what it was for him. Mm. Yeah, Japanese style and Mexican style is, is different. Mm -hmm. So if you were used to Japanese style, which he wasn't, so yeah. so that actually helped him. When Japanese guys, when it goes to Mexico, there's a lot of confusion. He didn't he didn't have that. So my start was in Mexico, so I didn't have that conflict. Okay. Um, now, how did your talks with WCW happen? Do at the WCW in high time script. Ano, saishoni, ano, sono toki cruiser kyo Nihon de, da ano junior heavy Nihon de junior heavy kyo tuin desu kado, ma so yu tatakai ga atte, sono naka de ma Marenko toka Eddie toka Mysterio toka ga ne. WCW He said, I didn't have, initially, I didn't have any um, thinking of working in the United States. But I, while I was in Japan, there was Junior Heavy, which is Cruiserweight mm -hmm. now, here. You know, it's told as Cruiserweight. But he didn't, so, but he was working with people like Molenko in Japan, mm -hmm. Eddie, Eddie Guerrero, oh, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio. So he had that, but he, you know, his his objective was not to work, you know, to to eventually work in. That wasn't in his even any thought. The Kareda ga Amerika no sono so yu dantai de katsuyaku shi ajimete. Boka mono sou bikkuri shi nasu. So when they when they became part of WCW, he said I couldn't believe that they were. You know, he, he said I was really surprised. The kore wa ore ni mo chance aru na to motta desu. He said, "That's that's when I realized there was a chance for me to go to go to United, go to America." Okay. He says, "At that point, through Masa Saito, um, who was was New Japan, um, he, he had a contact with Masa Saito, and of course, we were already in a relationship. Uh, WCW was." With New Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll add this too: that uh, Inoki had a, a festival in mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. I think it was Inoki Sun Peace Festival, so. New York. And and that's when he when uh, actually Eric was there negotiating some stuff with uh, Inoki, and and uh, uh, we went there to watch. Well, actually, I went there, and Eric was there, and I think Eric even left before they even show. But um, Eric realized how important the New Japan version of junior heavyweight, like like Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero, and at that point, when he saw 
guys like Ultimo Dragon, or I certainly witnessed these guys compete, well as a guy named that you might know, Chris Jericho. And 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 that's when when Eric had idea and says, we need these guys because they're different than what's on the United States TV now. So uh, that's when the opportunity came along and of course we we became uh, uh, friends at that time and, and ever since, you know, that's yeah. That I think that was in nineteen God, 90, go down here. 94, 95, no, somewhere? 95 or 6. Yeah. Now, all those names you just mentioned, Lionheart, Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Rey Mysterio, before going to WCW, were in Extreme Championship Wrestling. Did Paul Heyman ever contact you to try and... Not even once. Okay. He says, although I will tell you about uh, him is that um, when I went to WWE, he says he told me that that, that he was he was a fan of mine. He introduced it's himself. Really he said that really made me happy. Okay, um, and you know your debut in WCW uh, came, I believe it was Hogwild '96, the pay-per-view <laughs> against Rey Mysterio for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. With that being your debut, did you know it was a pay-per-view? Because Rey Mysterio debuted on a pay-per-view, but they never told him it was. Yeah, I knew it was a pay-per-view, but I knew it was a pay-per-view. Now, when I think about it, my debut was a pay-per-view, and the fight against Rey Mysterio was a pay-per-view. He says, he says um, I understood that it was a pay-per-view, um, but the fact that my debut was with Rey Mysterio, on a pay-per-view. So so he says I was very lucky because I got the showcase. Yes. 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 I got the because it was Rey Mysterio. Now, of course, it could have been others like Dean Malenko or, or Eddie Guerrero who understood that. But I, the, the, the match would have been totally different. You know, it wouldn't have gone as great as it was if it wasn't for somebody who understand my style or understand, certainly understand Lucha Libre. So that's why I was lucky. Okay. Um... How are you able to work in your contract to be able to work elsewhere while in WCW? Say it again? How was he able to work elsewhere, like when going to New Japan and still working in WCW? WCW no toki ni dou yona keiyaku de ano hoka no kaisha de hatarakimashita. Yo, demo mo keiyaku shita ra mo WCW shika shi yaku nakata shi. He says, no, after I signed with WCW, he says, I didn't work for other company. Okay. Um, well, October 11th, 1996, you win the, the J Crown Championship. Uh, for fans who don't know, uh, in 1981, the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship was created by UWA and WWF, actually part of the J Crown. Um, I have the whole list of belts here, the British Commonwealth Junior Heavyweight, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight, NWA Junior Heavyweight, NWA Welterweight, UWA Ju World Junior Heavyweight or Lightweight, the War International Junior Heavyweight, WWA Ju World Junior Light Heavyweight, and the WWF Light Heavyweight. Also at the same time, you are the WCW Cruiserweight Champion and the NWA Middleweight Champion. My first question is, how did it feel winning the J-Crown Championship? I was the J-Crown Champion So at that point, there was only three champions, mm -hmm. Sasuke, Liger, and of course, Ultimate Dragon. But mm -hmm. that was an eight crown, eight men were there, eight men were champions. And the tournament was there. Very first time, there was eight champions, all champions, and there was eight men championship. In that case, the champion was three men. The last five men were lost. What I thought was very important was that その、やっぱ彼らのその、そこのそういうトーナメントに出てきたっていう、なんていうの、なかなかそういうリスクできない。でも、
Yeah. The difficult that it was for representing all these company and company champions, right? So having that opportunity, politics, you can imagine. Yeah. To being able to do that was was. He says, I, 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 even now, I would like to thank all the people that actually made it ability to be able to do that tournament. He says, yeah, it's, it's not about me holding the belt, all the belts, but just mm -hmm. actually having an opportunity for those guys, you know, the company and, and the champion, so I would like to thank all the people who made it possible. Awesome. And uh, Sonny, you actually brought up the, the politics of it all. Is there a reason? Actually, I should ask this first. When it came to the, the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship belt, did you ever bring that on WCW TV? I don't know. Yeah, of course, you know, he was with all the belts, you've seen that. And one of the reasons, of course, it was shown on WCW TV, and of course, we got a phone call, you know. I don't know, I don't remember this, but 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 I don't remember this, he says, I, I'm not particularly sure of the dates, but I'm pretty close. My, what I remember is that there was, I had eight belts, and there was, Dean had cruiserweight, WCW cruiserweight belt, so that, you know, whoever wins it, wins it all. And, and I think day before that, I, I think that we got a call from WWE says, yeah, well, you can do that, but not on their TV. That's kind of how I remember it. Okay, all right. So technically you're the first to actually not only hold a WCW and WWF championship at the same time, <laughs> but you're also the first to bring a WWF championship on WCW TV. Correct. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible. Is there a reason why none of the names of the belts were actually announced on WCW television? I doubt they knew. Okay. You know. Right. Um, he answered a few questions ahead of time. Um, was there anyone in WCW that you wanted to work with but did not get the chance to? <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice if I could, I could, I could compete against somebody like Hulk Hogan. But I did on the TV Universal Studio. It's the Universal Studio. I got to compete against Macho Man Randy Savage, so that was one of his highlights. He said that was one of my great memories. <laughs> awesome. Um, if your surgery that you had coming off of the injury in WCW didn't have the, the botch to it. Do you know what plans WCW had for you moving forward? WCW is a series of surgeries. But if it wasn't that, WCW would be more important to Asahi's work. I don't know. He said, I don't know. But I will tell you this. this is my, I, I will probably answer that. You know, he became one of the guys. When, when I say one of the guys, I'm talking about Dean, Eddie, Ray, and and they were the action, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you didn't really need, you gotta remember, back then, those guys were considered cruiserweight, you know. It, it, that storyline for cruiserweight didn't really start till um, Chris Jericho who started demanding more story background. So, if there was tonight's show, Ultimo Dragon versus Eddie Guerrero, you didn't need a background, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, at least I didn't. 
And mm. I think many of the fans will tell you they didn't because they know how great these guys going to perform. So the match was worth tuning in. You know, you didn't want to miss that. And if you watch their show, if you watch, go back and watch Nitro, these guys' show was bridging into the second hour where we go head to head against when WWE was putting on their show. So that, you know, when you got stuff going on, you don't want to miss that. You know, they didn't want them to tune into their stuff. That's, so they use these guys strategically, you know, right on a second, a lot of time on second hour. Mm -hmm. Or open a show with, you know, bang. I mean, I'll be honest, when the cruiserweights were on, I was full blown WCW. Yeah. It was incredible wrestling. Uh, speaking while in WCW, and this is for the both of you to answer. How did you both feel when WCW split you two up? Yeah, I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. <laughs> Since I was a bad guy, I was, you know, what they call Octo manager, the evil manager. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, the storyline was that, you know, because <laughs> if, if, you, if you go back and watch all those shows, you know, you can analyze it. Although I was a heel, even if he tried to be a heel, what do you got to do? He didn't really sell with him, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He said, you know, he'd been babyface almost all his history of, you know, from, from the beginning. Yep. It's difficult for him to be, he would be a heel, mm -hmm. you know. So it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a natural for that storyline when they were trying to write a storyline about us, you know. And, and audience already knew was always cheering him as a baby face. So when I did something, even try to help him by breaking the rules, you know, they hated me for it. Yeah. And, and the fan was going, let the Otomo do his own thing. You know, he can win by himself. So he was never a heel, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so when we split up, there was a, it was a good storyline, you know? Okay. And what, cause what it does, the storyline allowed us for him to showcase when I went out and got, you know, psychosis and La Parca, that allowed him to compete against all the luchadors. Yeah. You know, so it made sense for us, you know, for us, for the storyline. Yeah, so that's all very lucky. Yeah. I and Sunny were like, I was a Japanese person. And Sunny was a Mexican person. And of course, I was a good match with my own match. So that story was good. He says what I just said. Basically, he, he believed the same way because he can do a great match with the Mexican guys, mm -hmm. the luchadors. So that story I made sense because I'm the bad guy who goes out and get a higher gun. I get all these, you know, the, the, the luchadors to fight against Ultimo Dragon who has the same style so they can produce a great matches, which they have, Yeah. you know. Yeah, now breaking away from, breaking away from the luchadors, how, what was it like competing with like the likes of William Regal for the TV championship? Oh. <laughs> he says, if I can say one word about William Regal, is that he's a very tough, strong wrestler. So I always thought myself as a cruiserweight. He says, you know, he, he, he asked himself, you know, given this opportunity to, to compete against somebody like Regal, he, he says, you know, that, that elevates him because he's cruiser cute, cruiser weight, get to compete against somebody who's, you know, who's in a main roster heavyweight. Yeah. And so he says, he wondered if that was opportunity was okay with the company. さあ、だから俺は思うのは、俺はクルーザー級のレスラーじゃん。で、その世界TVチャンピオンというのはもっと上じゃないですか。で、ベルト勝っちゃったから、多分それがあって怪我したと思うんですよ。行っちゃいけ
because I went above in his mind, you know, the U.S. Championship, and 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 uh, he said maybe I went beyond what I need to be. That's why I hurt myself. I think he says. Kami sama ga mitsu tamasu. He says probably that's God's will. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now you had that surgery that fixed the first surgery, and you start competing in ring again. What was your reason for reasoning for wanting to go to WWE? あの、怪我したじゃないですか。if I got hurt in a ring, I could probably justify it in my mind. He says, because I don't want to retire because it screwed up my, my operation. He says, I had I had I had few additional you know operation try to fix. それでまあその後ねあのまあ、ダブルダブルやっぱり自分はなんとかあのまた活躍したいなと思ったんですけどまあやっぱあまりもちょっとブランクがやっぱなかった体がついていかなかったそうですねあのまあダブルシーダブル
Was there anyone in WWE that you wanted to work with but didn't get to? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
for them to have English speaking manager doesn't speak Japanese don't make any sense right yeah so they need someone like me you know or same part that I played you know who can speak fluent English who can cut promo and 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 their behalf you know they do that for Brock yeah they do that for English speaking talents so what you know this this is certainly a forward あとね、さん、これは英語喋れるだけじゃダメだと思うんですよ。やっぱりアメリカの国のカルチャーを理解して、そのおしゃべりの話すセンスがないと英語なんか誰でもまあ誰でもとかまあアメリカの人は喋れ
star here or superstar on their own. That, that would be one of my dreams. だから野球でいうと、今あの、エンゼルスの大谷君が大活躍してるじゃないですか。ああいう選手がプロレスでもできてほしい。So, p e l e will be like somebody like、uh, Otani, the baseball player for Angels.、Mm-hmm. Or, uh, uh, and he, someone like him in that context, who has become a Japanese guy who has become beyond, you know, he's a top baseball player <laughs> in the yeah, country right、yeah. now. So, something that will be one of his dreams. Awesome, awesome.、Um, Sonny, in the last time you and I spoke, you actually held up a contract with UFC. Whatever happened? Well, I had, you know, I had many opportunities since I left WCW. And one of the opportunities I had was I, I did have, you know, you got into a discussion where I had an opportunity to, to go work there. But, you know, just things didn't work out, didn't materialize. And, and, and、uh, you know, I like being retired, only picking my shots and, you know, doing things like this. And、um, great interview with、uh, Lee as a person on top rope. <laughs> So, yeah, they, you know, and, and we get to go do some autograph signing like this, get to see all my old friends. It's a lot more easier to work than have to work. Awesome. I want to thank the both of you for taking the time to speak with me today.、Uh, this was a real honor.、Um, I, I hope you have safe travels back to Japan, Ultimo Dragon. Sonny, I thank you for doing uh, uh, interpreting for, for Ultimo Dragon. You haven't seen my bill, though. <laughs> you haven't seen my invoice. <laughs> But I understand English, right? Oh, yeah, he understands very good. Okay. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you hit subscribe so you can get all our content here at Perched on the Top Rope. And fans, remember spoiler free is the way to be. I'm out. <laughs>